I'm Will Hedrick. And I'm Jordan Schaffer. And this is Dog Years and Timestamps, a book club podcast. And here's a story I've heard. Uh, yeah, if you read, you get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how was your week, man? I haven't, haven't seen you in a week. Um, it's all whatever. Just yeah. working, you know. Working. Yeah. Same as ever. I bought a Switch. Ooh. Yeah. I, I think we talked it. about that last week. Um, not on the air, I think beforehand. Um, yeah, I was anticipating buying a Switch. Yeah, yeah, when we were at Kenneth's for game night. Yeah, or yeah that's what it was. How I do you like it? Did it? It's cool. Everything it's you wanted it to be? Yeah, I think so. I've only got one, the one game for it. There's a Fire Emblem game that just came out. Oh, that's what you got? I got that. So, But, you know, it's good. Nice. I, uh, I haven't, new. <laughs> yeah, I haven't hopped into the Nintendo world in so long. The only things I can remember really being like the big draws were like Smash Bros, Zelda, and then those were like the big ones, I guess. But mm-hmm. I'm trying to, I guess Fire Emblem, yeah, just like pulling the... the... Well, Fire Emblem hasn't been... It was certainly when we were kids, Fire Emblem was not a big deal in the West. Yeah. It didn't become a big deal until Awakening came out in like 2013. Game Boy game? Yeah. That's what well, the DS. Okay, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Um and when whenever that that was also one of the first times that the Fire Emblem games even came west. Uh like I think that a couple of the previous ones made it over on the Super Nintendo, but they just didn't get any attention. Yeah, they were probably just begging for them after Marth came out for uh Marth and Roy for That was Super the Smash first Rose. time that anybody in the West had seen that's, Fire Emblem Yeah, that's characters. what I was thinking, because uh, so many people liked those characters in that game that, that I'm sure melee. they wanted to learn like the, the lore behind them a yeah, little bit, Yeah, it definitely uh, piqued my interest. I was like, who are these <laughs> characters? I've never seen them before, and they were kind of my aesthetic, you know, being like medieval sort of mm-hmm. style, you yeah. know, stuff. And so I, I look, try to look it up, I'm like, what is this Fire Emblem series? Oh, it doesn't exist in the West. Fuck. Okay, never mind. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude, and all the Mario carts and parties, you got those to, to back you up? Yeah. Those That's are, cool. That's a good... It's good. all great, like, multiplayer games. Yeah. And I was thinking Animal about Crossing. that. I was like, well, I'm definitely going to get Smash Bros. at some point. And I was like, but, like, people don't come over to play games anymore. Right, yeah, Like, yeah, we're yeah. not... That doesn't happen like it used to when we were kids, so I'm just going to... I'm just going to play Smash Bros. myself all the time? Nah, I'm probably just not going to buy it. <laughs> yeah, Reed has a Switch, I think. Yep. Or at least he had been planning on one like a couple years ago, like when he was going to do the traveling in the van thing. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. And uh, I remember him, him playing on his Switch. But uh, nice. Well, that's cool. So yeah. a week with the Switch, mm-hmm. but nothing's changed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just playing Fire Emblem. I, now I guess I measure time in time not spent playing Fire Emblem <laughs> and time being happy. I love... Uh, <laughs> Those yeah. are my two different modes right now. Yeah, I love when something just like takes over like that honestly like when you get really into like a show or a game mm-hmm. or something you know and then that's all you can focus on like right. <laughs> it's definitely like the predominant thing in my thoughts yeah. i had to fight myself to not take my switch to work the other day <laughs> i was like i yeah. can just play fire when i'm at work and i was like no i should work while i'm at work that's probably <laughs> what separate. i ought to be doing right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah um there there are a few animes that like I'm I'm caught up with so every like once a week I'm watching the the one episode and it's mm-hmm. frustrating because what I are you watching right now? Uh, Black Clover. Oh, that's why you're still every watching week. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really good. I think it's getting better, honestly, yeah. which is cool. And um, that one is literally like my every week I watch that one. Uh, and then like Crunchyroll has a show that they're promoting a lot, the Doctor Stone. I've been watching that oh, one. Oh, I cool. remember you telling me about that one yeah. too. Yeah, and that one's getting that's consistently in the top three or four ranking every yeah. week that I see in this. You know, mm-hmm. one of the many dumb anime things that I follow. Yeah, so so that one's pretty cool too. And uh, and then I and then I put a few more on there that we had talked about the week before, like the is it wrong to pick up a girl in a dungeon or something? Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's and, great. That's and, such a great show. I love that show. So, that show makes me happy. And I think I'm they're on it. season two, right? Like, didn't they have a new this season is, or are they uh, just finished it literally or? the third season oh, okay. but it's the second part of the core series they okay. had like an offshoot series or whatever oh, okay. um, but yeah so this is the second season of nice. the, the core story oh cool yeah. yeah and really the only other thing i can think of that i dived this hard into was like uh red dead I dived super mm-hmm. hard into Red Dead. Yeah, and, I remember you yeah. telling me that whenever you were, you had borrowed it from me that yeah. was, you were spending a lot of time doing that. That's yeah, a great was, game. Yeah, it was, That's it's an easy fun. game to do that with. And it's hard for me to hop back into it because I'll get home and I'll be listening to like the book or a podcast or something really good, and then like I'll want to keep listening to a podcast or or whatever, and then and then I think like oh I can kind of do both, and you definitely can't do two things. You have to like so at least I do. I have to full focus into Red Dead because yeah, wanna, if you're doing any of the story do, stuff for yeah. sure, if you're I like, play well, I can properly. I can run around for an hour just exploring and hunting. Mm-hmm. Then yeah. you can you could listen to a podcast while right. You're doing That's that, a good but. idea. I guess I could do the the hunting stuff, which is fun. 
Mm-hmm. But uh, no, I had just been, um, I, I'm like debating playing it, I guess, yeah. at the moment. And uh, I've been shooting my bow a lot. I know I told you that before we, we started, but mm-hmm. I haven't I haven't gotten like obsessive though about anything, I guess, recently. So yeah, you're just trying to keep up the habit. Yeah, more than trying anything. to keep that habit up. And then, um, yeah, that's, that's about it. And then, and then just thinking about playing games. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thinking about playing right now. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty plain week. Yeah. For me too. Just, I didn't get a switch, but I, uh, mm. yeah, I bought a, I bought a book. I bought the, uh, the, the wheel of time book, the first, the oh, first in yeah. that series by Robert Jordan. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I haven't listened to any of it yet cause we had this one that I really wanted to hear first, but I'm excited because I think that'll get me really into that fantasy series. And I know there are mm-hmm. so many of those books, so I can pick them up and put it down <laughs> whenever yeah, that's I want. that's <laughs> a huge one. That's one of those like universes that has gotten so far along mm-hmm. and I'm ne- I haven't been on, I'm not on the ride. Right. And so now it's just intimidating. Like, I don't know that I'll ever be able to do it because Very I know that I'll have to read 800 books or whatever mm-hmm. it is, you know. Are you going to want to at least? <laughs> yeah, because I'm such a completionist whenever it comes to things. I want to, if, if I get into something and I enjoy it, I want to have all of it, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard for me to just go in 50%, you know. Mm-hmm. So I probably just won't. <laughs> for yeah. the same reason that I find it hard to imagine Although I think it would be a little bit easier to get into any of the Discworld stuff. Oh, yeah. Because they're kind of little offshoots of yeah, the Yeah, most of them are standalone, so you could get away with it. Mm-hmm. But I feel like I would still be like, no, now I got to read it all. And thankfully, they're also all very short. Not all, but the majority of them are like within like the 100, 200 yeah. page range. So it's a little bit more feasible. But I, I still, when I think about it, I'm like, oh, my God, that's so much. Yeah. There are a lot of cool, cool like short stories that authors um, collaborate and write like a big, um, like a collection of short stories. There's a, this one book I have called Legends, mm-hmm. and it's like written by Stephen King, uh, George R. R. Martin, um, I think Terry Pratchett wrote one. Uh, shoot, I can't remember any more of the authors. Um, shoot, it's that that girl that wrote the um, the Dragon Riders of Pern. Uh, oh, I don't know. I can't remember. I know you've name, talked about it but, before, uh, but, but I don't know. She she wrote something, and so and and they do like kind of what Terry Pratchett did with Discworld. It's it's in their universe, so this is like you know Mark. This is like an anthology of, series. Yeah, it's a Game you know? of Thrones mm-hmm. universe, but we're following around Aegon the first before he or Aegon before he becomes uh, the master of the Night's Watch or whatever. The uh, the the you know the one that goes to the Night's Watch to yeah. become the was Lord Commander. Well, to become the. The guy with the chain. God, I can't remember any of the words. Oh, from Game of the Thrones. maester. The maester, yeah, the yeah. maester for the the Night's Watch. Mm-hmm. So that you get his, he tells like that offshoot story a little mm-hmm. bit, which is kind of fun, because he was supposed to be the king um, right, for the yeah. throne, and then he's like, no, nah, I don't want to do that. I'm going to join the maesterhood, and then everyone was like, huh? <laughs> right. But yeah, um, what do you think of the book? I know I told you a little bit how I thought, but uh, I grew to like um, it a lot. It's interesting. Yeah. Um, I think. More just in the 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 makeup of the theology of the world is just interesting, you know. Yeah, I don't. It doesn't feel like she took too many um, like things from other like God cultures. I guess you know what I mean. Like not that I'm familiar with. Yeah, yeah. I, not Greek or Roman. You know, uh, you know those are the two. Right yeah, there. where <laughs> yeah, where there's like a a hierarchy and everything's more structured as opposed to this being like gods are just beings that live alongside humanity Mm -hmm. and they come in a very wide range of capability yeah um you know some of them being uh, small gods some of them being big gods and uh, there's some places uh, where everything where like the gods and humanity just kind of like live hand in hand and you know there might be as many gods as there are people in a city Mm -hmm. and they just kind of you know all mesh together uh or like in the far north, we get like a little side story where it talks about how small gods will just attach themselves to a single family. Yeah. And which is, it, to some degree, is a very Eastern uh, idea of theology. Because um, there's like, it, in Japanese uh, theology and Shintoism, there's uh, just like household gods as well mm-hmm. and things like that. So it, it's a little reminiscent of that to some degree, um, though the gods are a little bit more actively engaged and personified in this universe rather than, you know, any sort of modern understanding. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's in, we were talking about it earlier, but it seems like the gods are just kind of a soul that needs to embody something and not necessarily mm -hmm. uh, living or dead, just something. Yeah, like just the, whatever. The god that's narrating the story that we're in is a giant rock. You yeah. Know? Mm -hmm. and, uh, but he sees... Um, it sees like everything going on and it can hear basically everything in the town going on and, and definitely everything in the forest. That right. They, they yeah. Know. And, uh, it's, it was just, there was one point in the book where they mentioned that like, it almost made me feel like there was a bit of a stigma against the small gods. Like we don't have small gods here. Mm -hmm. Um, but in, you know, in the town, I that think that's like a reflection of, in or the the mentality of those people because right. they have a very powerful mm -hmm. big god that is just like the only power in mm -hmm. that area and so you know they're like well because our god is a powerful god we're so much better yeah. than people who have small gods of course we don't have small gods here how cool would that know? be to be in like some town just a normal dude and then like some small god comes and graces your family with its presence and then it right. becomes a part of your family how cool would yeah. that be like the snake family or whatever like mm -hmm. the people with the snake yeah. i mean the snake might not be the most ideal right. god i guess but, but they're, <laughs> they're able to do just like the equivalent to whatever power they get which is completely drawn upon what you offer it and if the only people offering to a god is just your like you know three-person family or whatever then it's not going to get a bunch of power but it could help you like um, you know, maybe get more fish in your catch. Yeah, it might or help with the crops that the year mosquitoes or don't bother <laughs> right. you anymore, and you know, just things like that. I would just feel small little conveniences that make your life overall better. I would just feel good. Like I would feel like I'd have an extra spring in my step. Like I got a god behind me. You know, mm -hmm. like I'd feel like I had a little extra spunk. I think. Right. <laughs> I think <laughs> certainly kind of de depending on where you start as well, because in this oh, world yeah. it's such a ubiquitous thing mm -hmm. that. It would just be part of life, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, it's just like that's the standard of your life is that yeah. you get the small benefits of having a god maybe. Um, if you have a personal god, like the one offshoot story that we get mm -hmm. where we find out, you know, what it is that might have instigated the war. Um, you, he, the, that guy didn't have a personal god and then happened upon one, and so his life became a little bit better. But mm -hmm. it wasn't like... He was ecstatic about it or anything like that. He was like, oh, yeah. this is, you know, this is very beneficial. <laughs> <laughs> Just kind of level about it. You yeah. Know? And I mean, sometimes people had no idea, like, because they're naive human, we're naive humans. Like, we don't know that a God is there, you know, in, or that it was influenced mm -hmm. by a God. Like, we, this book is written through a lot of stories, you know, uh, the, I'll tell you, the reason I said the thing I did in the intro, um, here's a story I've heard is because, you know, the, the God that we're with just sees and hears and witnesses everything and then sits there and thinks. So he tells a lot of stories. And, mm -hmm. uh, so that's like how he kind of relates the world back at us. And, right. Um, all the, th all the stories that we're being told are also connected to what it is that's happening. Yes. You know, um, like the one that we just briefly mentioned about the guy who, uh, gets his own little personal household God that he uses, mm -hmm. um, leads into, or is a reveal as to what it is that happened that uh, instigated or worsened the uh, war that was happening between the Raven, who mm -hmm. is our main god of this story. Well, I guess not really because the, the one that's narrating it might be the yeah, main god. Yeah, it kind of, since the title of the book is The Raven yeah. Tower. and that, like, he's, he's, So he's the Raven of, of Iridan is the main god in the the territory that we spend most of our time or at least yeah. our, the present day story that's happening because we also jump back with the god's pers the mm -hmm. narrating god's personal story um the patience and the but oh the raven is like starting like a war mm -hmm. over trade because the raven's very ambitious and wants to control more and more and more oh, yeah, you, its can, presence. you can tell its ambition just after it makes like after Sorry, go on. You can tell it's ambitious. Yeah, it, it, just it, treaties it, it makes and stuff. Right, yeah. It, you know, declares that it's going to, uh, that all ships that pass through the channel, because mm -hmm. it's, it's in a city that's situated on a strait, and there's another city across the strait from it. And so mm -hmm. all this trade comes in through that area, and he makes a declaration that all ships that come through must seek permission from the raven first or whatever and so that starts a war and the 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 funny thing when they were telling that story or when our god i guess was telling that story mm -hmm. is that it didn't even seem like the other gods that had because because the raven had come in and like the people that had been you know the will of the raven like part mm -hmm. of his uh the raven's court um 
they just went into the silent forest and they just started doing whatever they wanted. They started collecting lumber and then the, and just like doing Mm -hmm. as they would. And then that's when like the gods of the forest kind of retaliated and you never saw those people again. Mm -hmm. And then there was like this unbalance and then they all kind of teamed up together. Well, it's only one God in the forest. Yeah, the, where's the uh, so there wasn't the the, the god city of the darkness. across the the, the god the wasn't city there? across the strait mm-hmm. uh, has a myriad god structure. Where I thought the, there was a, the god of darkness that was surrounded the forest, and then there was the god of the forest. And mm. then when they it's just they the had one like god kinda, of they the forest. Had started a treaty, and then there was the because I, I thought there were two. I mm. mean, I'm just so ready to believe there are a bunch right, of gods yeah. that like they might have. There might be a the bunch thing. of little gods that just kind of surround the area. But as far as whoever it is that runs the area, it's just the God of the silent forest. Silent forest. See, that's mm-hmm. probably what I did. Cause I, I was thinking it was the God of silence and there was a God of the forest. Oh, and I think, no. I think I just turned them into two and then, mm-hmm. and then, but they kept saying the God of the silent forest. So I was like, Oh, that's probably what they call it. Like Brangelina. <laughs> <laughs> it's their, it's their celebrity right. God name. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, no, yeah, it's just the one God. And it runs Iridan, and then the raven comes from somewhere else, but decides Iridan would be a great place to settle because then I can get the Resources trade of the strait and, yeah, and I can grow my power. And you know, starts like a little war with the god of the silent forest, and they kind of realize that they're an equal match for each mm-hmm. other, or at least ambiguously so. Yeah. And so then they e- eventually come to an agreement that they'll run Iridan together. And yeah, it seems potentially like potentially grow their power, you know, even further. Yeah, it seemed like the for, for like the payment for the raven getting to be like the because the raven is like the lead god there. He's like the mm-hmm. one in charge. But it seemed like the the counter to that was like no, there will be a checks and balances. Like my the the mother of the silent the mother forest, of the silent yeah the, yeah. the head priest yeah, of the silent could, church or whatever she could ask the raven and the um it's shoot. like a like a council of three yeah, like you know and, and you get the raven's the lease jurisdiction yeah and the mother of the silent mm-hmm. and then the representative of the directions which mm-hmm. is like the, the the human element of government in iridan or whatever mm-hmm. you know there's all these representatives which are the different directions and then they have a you know a, a central representative that is on the raven's court or whatever yeah. and yeah it's just those three the mother of the silent the raven's lease and then the leader of the directions and that's the government system mm-hmm. of Iridan. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, okay, so they, they do a treaty with the forest, and then they're, they're like, cool, I guess, because then they let the raven be in charge, whereas mm-hmm. everybody else is kind of like the just like a notch underneath because right. but it seems like the raven is the one that makes the fi- final call and i guess the reason we were talking he's about he's like the head we were, of state but then you've got yeah. these other representatives of the, the other parties keep that the balance contribute yeah and make a balance exactly yeah. and um okay so the reason i think we went down that road was because we were talking about like the ambition mm-hmm. of this of the uh, raven, of the raven. Yeah. and you can tell just just from what you said earlier like he he does this treaty with uh with the other gods like the god of the silent forest and and everybody and and then he <laughs> he takes control of this strait because it knows that it's like a, a passageway for for a trade. But like the other gods don't think on the level of human. You know what I mean? It seems like it seems like the raven almost has a bit of like a human element to to it because it thinks on a small, not a smaller scale, but like a uh, it thinks outside of the box as as far as gods mm-hmm. go. You know, because it it. it well, it's it got, it's got an extreme ambition. Exactly. It, it wants and to it's grow planning itself. so where, far ahead, yeah, mm-hmm. and, and thinking, like, if I can own this strait, then I will own all the trade in this area. And then after mm-hmm. just a couple of times of, like, the people, like, it letting people go through or, like, letting things happen as they would after it, like, collected taxes a couple of times, then it was like, I declare that anyone who wants to go through the strait has to get permission, <laughs> you know? And right, then, yeah. And then it's like, all right, now you get all the money from that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and we so we, we haven't even seen how the rest of that part plays out yet. Mm, no. But we, we know that it starts like a war, and then that has some far-reaching consequences up north for people who relied on the trade, because trade comes to, like to, to a halt while the war is happening. And that's where we're, you know, with the strength and patience of the hill, the narrating God, mm-hmm. um, like his people are being affected by not being able to get the resources, and it feels like mm-hmm. a nomadic, like, sort of like Native American style um, culture up there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then there's like sort of like some infighting between them and another clan. And so like we're, you know, getting the story, the present day story 
where our char- our main characters are Mawat, the heir to the Raven's Lease, yes. and Iolo is, I think, our main character, who is his yeah. aide. And then we're getting backstory for everything that is, you know, culturally what led us to where we are in the yeah. present day. And that's with the narrating god who was at some point just a boulder on a hillside uh, that kind of helped overlook and protect these n- nomadic peoples. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we find out at some point that he's now part of like him as a boulder had gotten broken up into building stones that make up the Raven's tower and most of the other structures, I guess, of the fortress. Mm-hmm. And so that's why he's now there. <laughs> um, but what all well, like, I can hear everything in that town and... and we're going to, you know, get that more and more with the second half of the book, you know, as, as everything comes together past and present. And, um, and what that means, there's all this political intrigue of, you know, because the, 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 the catalyst of the story is that Mawat's father, the current Raven's mm-hmm. Lease, has gone missing or is yeah, MIA. dead. We don't know what happened. Then he immediately gets replaced by his brother, Mawat's uncle. Yes. And the sequence of events is completely irregular of tradition Mm -hmm. usually there's like a mourning period for moving on to the next lease and all this sort of stuff but they're saying that his father fled and defaulted on the deal where he doesn't sacrifice himself with the death of the raven's current instrument yeah which can't happen it seems like since there's so much influence from the gods from the raven itself like Mm -hmm. if it can protect him from being attacked by certain people because you can't just kill the yeah they mentioned that the you least. can't kill the least so you can't you kill him because the raven to. yeah the raven yeah. would interfere in some mm-hmm. way so by that same token you'd think that since he would have to sacrifice himself for the raven up until that point when he needed to be to sacrifice himself as the tribute you'd think right all the way up until that point he'd be helped to get there you know like right, you don't think anything yeah. would get in the way especially not him running away because he's mm-hmm. held by the power it would of be god a hand. very small thing for a god as powerful as the raven to be able to just even just uh, uh was the materialize mm-hmm. a knife there for him to use you yeah know? and i mean yeah. short of other divine intervention like it seems like it, it just does it doesn't it's too hard to piece together as of now because we mm-hmm. the, the the pieces we've been given can't happen <laughs> right. it's like chernobyl it's like it can't blow up yeah <laughs> so we don't know <laughs> there's some sort of and we'll obviously find one of the things that is currently being given to us through the perspective of moat and naolo is that moat's uncle the now current lease uh hibal had something to do with the downfall of Moat's father and, you know, obviously the pushing through of him becoming the lease instead of Moat because he mm-hmm. was going to be the, he, he's still the heir, you know, ostensibly. Yeah, the lease heir. They're saying that they needed a new lease as quickly as possible because of some outstanding circumstance that they needed to be able to commune with the Raven more quickly and all this sort of stuff, but they won't say what that is. Mm-hmm. And, and there's all this sort of like misleading and misdirection that the, you know, the powers that be are giving. And, we're not really getting any answers. It sort of feels like they're actively hiding the answers, even whenever then Hibal says, okay, Yola, let's go ask the Raven questions that will bring, you know, your Lord Mawat's, uh, you know, temper within, you know, reason. And all the answers that they get from the Raven seem, they, they have to be ambiguous because at this time the raven doesn't have a mouth to speak with so they have mm-hmm. to you know drop tiles and it's like a game of charades basically mm-hmm. you have to interpret what the moves are and the answers seem kind of like because they're so ambiguous you can interpret them in many a bunch of different ways but the way that hibal is interpreting them seem very convenient for the for him and yeah different things like that but you can also sort of see where if you wanted to read into it us being you know uh, inherently against Tibal because he's the antagonist to our current heroes. Yeah, l- luckily there was the other guy there, uh, um, Rakuten Ra- Ra- or something Radikar like that. Or something, Radikar, yeah. yeah the, and, uh, he's the current uh, counselor of the directions or whatever his title is. Yeah, and luckily that he was the one um, interpreting the tiles. Yeah, he's Otherwise, the actual interpreter yeah. where Hibal it has not ever had to do that before. He's just. But it does. It did kind of seem like Hibal either knew more ex- than was letting on, he or he could the, kind of read the tiles a little bit. Yeah, and it's definitely like certainly in that last one where he makes it like his own mm-hmm. interpretation. The clues that are the, the tiles that are given to us 
whatever his name is, the, you know, the director, the, or the, you know, counselor of the directions or whatever his name is, title is, he was just like reading the tiles out, right? And it was just like, you know, a tile for go, a tile for one, a tile mm-hmm. for like blah, blah, blah. And then he was just like kind of like literally reading them. It's like, well, it says one go. So that must refer to what one should go inside, mm-hmm. you know, and stop with this protest that he's doing and all mm-hmm. that sort of stuff. And so it's kind of like, you know, it's a little like low hanging fruit. Yeah. You know, there's not really any like solid interpretation going on there. Yeah. As opposed Just to like the previous dancers that was happening, like the interpreter was like coming up with like full sentences and stuff like mm-hmm. that, you know? Yeah. Uh, and so it's, it's, it's kind of convenient storytelling in a way. Um, but yeah. it's also literally speaking, it, they're all, they're literally playing a game of charades, you know? Mm-hmm. So it, obviously there is some interpretation that has to happen and it may or may not be complicated or not. It's, uh, it's kind of cool seeing the, Getting to, I mean, you kind of have a feeling Habal's corrupted already. You know, like mm-hmm. we don't get a whole lot of evidence, but he definitely this has his own ends. And we hear about mm-hmm. Moat talks about how he, like, whenever his father was still Lee's, Hibal would kind of like make these sideways comments about mm-hmm. if he was Lee's, things would have been better in the situation. Yeah. And he wants to move the bench across the strait to the other city because he thinks it would be more convenient for the mm-hmm. way that things are moving culturally. And that's not so great for the regular part of Iridan. Um, like the one direction that talks with the Yolo is like, that would be really bad for my people. Yeah. Cause that would mean that, you know, trade is going to happen over there. And so less things will make it across the strait and my people won't get those resources. And mm-hmm. so there's some political stuff that's going on. What is he ball stake in all of that? Why does it make sense for him to move the bench across the strait? It almost seems like he's got to deal with another God. <laughs> yeah. Know? But, but we haven't how, heard from yeah. the God of the silent forest for over a hundred years at this point. So what's going mm-hmm. on there? If he's still, or she, I don't think that they've given him an article yet. Uh, the I'm going to say he, because the the tone that was given to it made it seem like it was a a god of a male persuasion. Yeah. Like, there's no real gender. It seems like for any of the gods, except for they give some of them definitive articles. Like I can't even stalker the god that the tell were using uh, in their mm-hmm. you know fight. Uh, yeah, they definitively say she. Uh, the the myriad the she. is a she yeah i think you i couldn't remember i asked you and you said that you remember them giving the strength and patience an article of he at some yeah, point the, the only reason i remember that is because the whole time i had been listening i thought it was a she and mm-hmm. then they said he and i was like wait a minute does yeah. that does that matter <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then, it, it doesn't seem to really matter i was but... gonna say until she has a or sorry until he gets somebody some other god or human pregnant because right, I, yeah. I don't know if they even do that in this world because in all the other yeah, universes, how are gods born is yeah. another kind of weird because there's ancient are, are gods there, are there and demigods then there's newer too? gods I yeah mean, the that, demigods, that's something that hasn't been brought forth at all yet yeah that's always been something with at least greek and uh roman you know yeah, uh, mythology that's thing, like yeah. a yeah gods are bored so they bang you know and then they, and then they have kids and um it, you'd think it'd be more common here but i guess with the gods being what they are like our ours is this mm-hmm. the, is a rock you know and, then and i think that this gets and... to be a little bit more ambiguous because it's a a modern modernly made up theology mm-hmm. it's, uh, yeah. thing whereas back then you know with greek mythology and all of that it was just kind of like we, we don't have the context of everything that we do nowadays mm-hmm. and so they create these theological structures just based on themselves Mm -hmm. because they don't have as much imagination without the same thousands of years of time and culture that we Mm -hmm. do now so it's just like well what would the gods do well they'd fuck each other and they'd come (laughs) fuck us you know so (laughs) you know it's it's a little bit more basic what would you do if you were alive forever (laughs) right yeah (laughs) and fuck (laughs) and so it it, i think that it gets to be different because it's a manu you know a a freshly manufactured theology theological structure that is in a situation where we have the context of all of human history at this point and the different theological ideas that existed in the past and currently Mm -hmm. and all that sort of thing. Yeah. I think that that does well for the method of storytelling too, because at least her her going off of not basing it on any theology or whatever, using Mm -hmm. her own um, theology that she's creating. um, I think it works well because I don't know if we've explicitly said it, but the book is given to us narrated from the god of uh patience what was his, 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 the, her, his the strength name? and patience of the hill okay is the, the title that the yeah the, the strength and, give him yeah the strength and patience of the hill um is narrating the book 
through everything he sees and hears and um, is told. And uh, mm-hmm. so he'll tell us stories that he had heard of other gods and other things. So we can kind of learn the interaction between humans and gods and learn a little more about gods and their powers and the, mm-hmm. the meaning of words, you know. And um, it is yeah. it, like, I think, like what you're getting yeah. at is that it's a really interesting storytelling mechanic. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. the Because the power of the gods is what they say is truth. Well, and so they have to be very careful the way that they speak because if they just say, um, like the one time that the our narrating god really does something is whenever he kills that other mm-hmm. god that helped the people attack his people. Yeah, he just says that god is dead, and that makes that true. Yeah, when they so s- long as he has enough power to counter the gods that are yeah, yeah power yeah. or whatever. Um, and so he always starts his stories with this is a story that I experienced because mm-hmm. then he can definitively say, this is what happened. I was there. So yeah. I know that, uh, or he says, this is a story that I have heard because it was mm-hmm. being a story that he's just heard. He's just going off the account of somebody else, which may or may not have some truth or yeah. you know, manufacturing in it. Yeah. Or there's, yeah, so if he just says, know. you know, in the past there was a man, mm-hmm. but the character was actually a girl. Then he's having to use his strength to make that female a male. See. And so he has by to... By saying I've heard, it mm, makes it more ambiguous. He has to use all these qualifiers big. all the time. That's cool. And, I, the, and so then narratively, that then uh, provides really interesting ways to reveal something happening because then... Like there was one chapter, and I can't remember exactly what it was, but now being in the mode of knowing what it is, that, how, they, how he says things and how things matter the way that he says things... Because one may just be a story, one may be something that happens. There was mm-hmm. one chapter that ended with him making a declaration, and I was like, "Oh shit, Uh-oh. that means that it <laughs> does happen, or something yeah. like that." Like that's significant. Mm-hmm. It brings a different weight to everything that gets told. I think it's also interesting too, just that it's he's telling the story, he's telling like his experiences and things that he's heard, and then it's also he's given us a lot of info on. Aolo. And we don't know why. Mm-hmm. He doesn't even know why. He just likes him. He thinks he's cool. Something about it he and, knows is important. Yeah. Or whatever, and so, you know? and, and it's funny because, you know, when, when, uh, when he was learning language in the beginning, he talked about how he learned it in a relatively short amount of time, but for him, <laughs> so right, like yeah. three or four generations is what he thought mm-hmm. that it took him. And it's just, it, it's kind of crazy to me to think that like, for that being a short amount of time to throw so much interest into a human and a human lifespan, it's just like a blink of the eye to him. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's interesting that, uh, that we're getting the narrative in this way. Cause right. it's him, you know, telling us about this other guy. He doesn't know if he can even hear him. He's talking like he's talking to him though. Right. And it, uh, it's cool. Cause they say you a lot, even though, you know, he's not talking to you <laughs> Yeah, right. and you know, you're not like, it's not mm-hmm. like we're reading in when we, it's not like we change perspective either. And we hop into Elo's perspective and then, and then he's thinking I, you know, mm-hmm. and then, then we can almost pretend like we're, we're receiving the info like, Aolo. Right. it's literally like, it's just strength and patience <laughs> it's talking like, to Elo. Yeah. It's <laughs> like, we're the omnipotent <laughs> right? Yeah. and we're watching over We're just like the third party <laughs> listening to this conversation, yeah. this one way conversation. This one way conversation. <laughs> Because he doesn't have a mouth, and that's why he can't talk to anybody. And that's why language didn't matter either, I don't think, for a long time, because they didn't have to articulate anything. They could just probably, you know, show intent or, you know, pictures, kind of like how I just imagine Mm -hmm. babies think. Well, we sort of see the progress that Strength and Patience makes in his Mm -hmm. backstory up to this point so far. Because he is really ambivalent for, Mm -hmm. you know, several millennia and Mm -hmm. doesn't really care about anything that's happening. He doesn't realize that he has power or even what gods are until a, the first time that the a priest of the Kaluet finds him. Right, and throws and milk. And says, oh, this is a god. Did, and starts making pour off- milk at his feet Yeah, that's something? one of the things. Like making different <laughs> offerings and then trying to teach him language. Oh, that was, yeah, that was teaching, yeah. Uh, because the language is how the power manifests. Mm-hmm. Uh, or at least can be it's made. A tool, it's a tool mm-hmm. to use the power because the gods before there were because language were about, like, we manifesting about, power, but mm-hmm. they couldn't speak. They didn't have a spoken language, the gods before, like the old old gods before. Well, we still don't know a whole lot about them either. But, be- but Because he says like... He said he didn't he, he know if they had a language because yeah. he didn't have one. Yeah, so exactly. we had, I, I guess I just assumed that they didn't. But, but who um, taught them the language? And them being the ancient gods, the myriad then, you know tells patients some stories that she's heard about the ancient gods and 
if they were able to do the things that he experienced them doing, like, you know, tearing apart the rivers and mountains and stuff like that when they were fighting, mm-hmm. if they were able to do that before humans existed, where did their power come from? Because their power, you know, the modern gods or not the ancient gods, whatever you want to call them, uh, draw all their power from offerings and prayers from humanity. Yeah. And if they don't get that, then they just stagnate at whatever power level they're at. Yeah. So where do the ancient gods get the amount of power to be able it, to tear apart the earth? Like a limitless amount of power? Where do you... I think that's something that's going to come back at some point. We're going to experience an ancient god. And, and that's, Well, our god's yeah. relatively ancient. It's been around since Earth, at least. Um, he seems to have been there as long as Earth's been around. Uh, if this but, is Earth. <laughs> yeah. It, it seems to be Earth. Yeah, I think it's so. A, the evolutionary tale that is told by strength and patience tracks with mm-hmm. you know what we say mm-hmm. Earth happens to Earth. Yeah. Um, the, but I don't think he's one of the ancient gods, unless that becomes some sort of reveal where he understands that he is one of the ancient gods. But then even then, like, I don't know what purpose that would serve because he already has language at this point. It's just, it would serve purpose because then it would give him the, um, vast amount of power reserve or whatever. But we know that whenever (laughs) he he kills that God, he had to have more, the myriad had to give him some of her strength Mm -hmm. to help prevent him from, from dying in that, in that attack. Yeah. Uh, So I don't know. Well, and yeah. And he, he like definitely liked offerings. You know, he was, he, he grew stronger with the offerings and the part of the 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 growth that we watch him uh, go through is that even unknowingly he realizes that he has become partial to the mm-hmm. humans around him that are worshiping him or like those are his people, you know? Yeah. And whether or not he wanted to say it himself because he still wanted to believe that he was, you know, an indifferent God that didn't care. He had been around and watched the stars for millennia mm-hmm. without doing anything. So why does he care about the fleeting moments of humanity? Uh, but then like the attack on his people happens and he reacts and then, you know, it becomes mm-hmm. clear that he does in fact care about these people and you know that's a that's a change that he is finding in himself yeah, that's to the point where then he you know makes the move to Iridan, uh, you know which we'll find out how that happens at some point. It becomes part of the structure, the actual literal stone structure of the fortress. Yeah, I guess we'll find out whether that was intentional or like passively intentional because it right, seemed like yeah. all things that happen to him are because of him. It seems so, to be, man. Seems like either through main. I think that it's like, going to have to end up being something that was intentional because I, I can't think so imagine too. that the Raven would knowingly grab <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> him and bring him to be the structure of his city, mm-hmm. because we know strength and patience to be a relatively powerful god, mm-hmm. at least more powerful than a lot of the small gods that we you know yeah. flit in and out of the story. So. I don't know. It doesn't seem like something that the Raven did. It seems like something no. that he intentionally did, that the Strength and Patience did. But yeah, but it's some of the things that he does, he doesn't even notice or realize yeah. that that's why he's doing them. It's it's the way, I think it's the way his mind works, you know, because mm-hmm. he's never in a rush. He's, he's not so slow. He's like anything. the Ents in Lord of the Rings. Exactly. Like everything that they do is so slow and almost passively methodical mm-hmm. in a weird way. And that's, I, th- I think that's the same. But I think whenever he saves his people. Oh, that was. Is whenever that's the turning point where he then realizes that I've been doing a lot of things passively for a really long time. Uh, and now I'm doing things actively. Yeah. I got to pick up the pace. Because now that he knows that he cares about the people yeah. and he cares about the, because he, a lot of the passive things that he did was just like kept the leaves off him, mm-hmm. kept the snow off him you know, just made him visible or just like, you know, able to at least just literally see the stars or whatever. Yeah. Like he realized that he was doing all those things, you know, kind of passively, but those are still things that he was doing Yeah. or unconsciously might've been a better word. And and so that inherently means that he does care Yeah. as opposed to like this kind of persona that he thought he had where he didn't care about anything that happened. Time just happens, whatever. But then why am I keeping myself uncovered? You know, so I guess I do care. And so he kind of has that transition of thought where yeah. he realizes that he's not as passive a god as he thought he was. Mm-hmm. And and so then, and, but now he's in Iridan making up the building blocks of the city. So the he definitely becomes more active. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see. I, I want to, I'm, I'm excited for whenever the past and present mesh in his telling. Me too. I want to know what all that means. And then with all the government stuff that's happening, mm-hmm. there's these people from the south, the Zulans, that are doing something. Yeah. 
Something's yeah, going they're on involved. Tell. Yeah. Like, the tell are way more active than they had been, and Mawat's kind of thinking about that, like, what's going on here? Mm-hmm. What's going on with the Zulans? Why are they trying to do this thing? Why does it seem like they're in league with Habal in some way? Yeah. Are There's you okay? a bunch you of like, stuff going on. Do you like Mawat? Are you okay with him? I'm indifferent towards Me him. Me too. He doesn't have any character at all at this point aside from just having a short temper yeah and even that it just seems like well i guess i get it you know you've never been questioned your entire life you're basically a prince and mm-hmm. your dad died like i get it like you're right i get you having a bit of a temper you know and right. a bit of an attitude <laughs> and they <laughs> an say that everybody attitude. in that family has like a pretty short temper as well mm-hmm. like his father was known for having a temper his father was known for having well, a temper and it also says too that his like only friend is uh aolo <laughs> and yeah. like and everyone kind of knows it and it's like well if, you know, if he's only able to make one friend, he probably does have a real short fuse. <laughs> he might not be right, super yeah. pleasant. Mm-hmm. But uh, um, I'm sure this uh, was kind of obvious to it to me. It just screamed out because I had seen the lion. I had just seen the Lion King as like the the new the new one that came out. Mm-hmm. But I got a huge Lion King vibe with this. I mean, obviously the dad dying, the uncle That's a taking the brother usurpation, <laughs> yeah, and, the, yeah. and, then, <laughs> and then the the corruption that uh, that he's. The, that the brother's trying to like it i'm I'm just i'm keeping a close eye on him because i want to see the way that he manipulates the situations as with the little bit of info that we get of him as a character right now he's the given villain right exactly so, so i want to see him manipulate things i also i'm excited to see if if anything like so like you know how uh you know when they made when these people made a treaty with the uh, the silent forest um they the silent forest like would just keep like bugs off of them and stuff when they were coming in. Um, mm-hmm. it's, I, I'm, I'm interested to see if maybe a bunch of little things like that, like say, our, you know, our God, the patience, mm-hmm. <laughs> patience, the hill, um, say like all the passive things he did by keeping Eolo, like, you know, the sun shining on him or whatever, or whatever passive things he was doing. I'm excited to see if all the little things like that be, even if they were unintentional, if they like kind of co you know, like if they ramp up, if they kind of avalanche or, or, or snowball, that's the word I'm looking for. If they snowball to make like a bigger thing, like if they if they maybe give Aola this undying loyalty because he remembers all these times that, you know, the god had been there right next to him. And then so then so then he feels even more, you know, uh, passion and pride and and, uh, and, and patriot, not patriotism, but, you know, right, like right. Uh, um, a, a more of an allegiance to that god, mm-hmm. I guess is what I'm trying to say. And, and that's just a small example, I guess, to make him super into the, the god that we're following but um it'd be interesting to see if there's a, any little thing like that i can't think of an example um right now but maybe maybe if like uh i don't know some something with like the because uh, something with the forest has got to come up so i don't know um i'd like to see just like something like uh the forest maybe had influence on some small gods so the small gods will like go to the silent forests team mm. and and so then like it well we know that the god that we follow fights the raven like that's straight up said so, but has it happened yet? Like, it hasn't happened I yet. I don't think so. Yeah. So, but it's this. It's weird because it's like we're getting almost omnipotent storytelling of like future and past. But like, mm-hmm. it seems like there is a present that we're gonna meet up with. Like, not like this whole story's already been told and it's just a retelling. Right. So I don't know. I think it seems like yeah. It seems like there's the point where it meshes anyway. is going to be how strength and patience comes to Iridan. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think that's going to be the point where then his story matches up with what's going to happen. And that's still going to be, you know, maybe a thousand years prior to the actual present. But Mm -hmm. then maybe he says, and then that's when I laid in wait or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. And then I was from that point on, I was just monitoring everything and just, you know, whatever his end game is. If there is an end game, that's the other thing. Like, is there an end game for any of these people and gods? Yeah. Because yeah. the silent, the god of the silent is pretty content to just have its own power that it already has, which is given to be relatively immense. Mm-hmm. Um, and it seems and, content to just like exist as long as is written, <laughs> you right, know, like yeah. I'll, like it's fine with you know I'll just exist as long as I'm supposed right. to, and then like I'll it gets stop. its yeah. it gets its you know tribute from its people and you know grows in its strength and is able to do whatever it kind of wants to but it's fine to just kind of be in its region mm-hmm. the raven's the one that has ambitions and yeah and sort of entices the forest into it and it's like hey if we team up we can take over this whole area and we can both be a lot stronger and it's the like, forest okay. is like oh, that's not a bad idea i can help sure, with yeah. that sure <laughs> but the, them 
you know, repeatedly talking about how the forest has been silent for over a hundred years. And like, yeah, it's going to be important. unless it's talked to, well, at least patience tells us that it hasn't talked to anybody in over a hundred years. Yeah. So, so we're being told that it hasn't even talked to like, you know, the mother or anything yeah. like that. It'd be interesting if there are people still making like tributes and sacrifices to it. There definitely are. So we it, even see so we would a, think that a live example of it happening. Yeah. It's definitely still receiving power. But Strength and Patience says it might as well be as good as dead. <laughs> so is it not getting as much power as it needs to continue to grow? Or I mean, what does Strength and Patience know? It's or is the raven sapping power from it somehow? Um, okay. And oh, yeah, and that's why it's gone silent because of the treaty. There, maybe there's something like in the hard lines of the treaty. Like if we go, I don't know if there was a treaty because we didn't read one, but right. if, uh, if we could read anything that God they come to said an specifically. Agreement. Yeah, yeah, like if we could read the specific agreement, like what they said exactly, so then we could see if it gets manipulated later because we know right. that when we see like a there there's a point ghost. where we see a prayer that is given to the um silent to the god of the silent forest and strength and patience is you know recounting it and he says something like hopefully because it also talks about how these constant little requests being mm -hmm. made of the god of the silent forest um and it says hopefully these constant requests just immediately sap what little strength it is being given. Mm. And so there seems to be so some sort of hard feeling between patience and the silent. Yeah. Where, you know, patience is afraid of the silent getting stronger again for some reason. Yeah. And, and the uh, patience had a, had like an opportunity to join up with the silent forest too, because the, well, we would assume so, but well, nothing it was, that's been given just yet. I, I'm pretty sure didn't the myriad um, shoot. Is that, who is who's his friend the mosquito the, God? the myriad, yeah. myriad yeah. didn't didn't she she gr teamed up with the the silent force too no. right man i could have sworn there was like Not a group that we've of gods seen or heard yet man i thought there was a group of gods that like teamed up with the forest and i don't I think anybody's teamed up because i because th i thought the, the, the that raven teaming up with the forest is the first time that the forest has ever teamed up with another god hmm. and even before that the forest didn't even make didn't uh receive or not receive but didn't uh, listen to or any uh, sort of petitions from humanity, even the ones that prayed to it. Yeah. Until finally, at some point, some mother of the silence said, "Hey, if you accept petitions from us, more people will pray to you, and you'll grow stronger. So maybe think about that." And finally, yeah. the god was just like, "Okay, yeah." I thought that I read that the god, the god the, of the silent force, has always been singular. But I thought that until the point that the raven tries to fight it, and they realize, "Oh shit, we're both really strong, and we're not going to give any ground. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should work together." I thought that our God, the patience in Silent Hill, or patience on the hill, um, mm -hmm. I thought that he had an opportunity to join, but it didn't even have to think about it for an hour because it was like, I don't want to do that. I don't uh, remember but that I could have sworn, all. yeah, I could have sworn that like exact thing came out. Like, because the only have reason to think that they, for even the only hour. connecting tissue between anything happening in Aridin and way up north, like mm -hmm. way up north where Patience is originally, is that the trade war is happening and that is preventing his people from getting some stuff, which he says he doesn't care about until the point that he kills that other god right. in a reactionary state. Yeah. So th this is a point where he's going to maybe get involved in trying mm -hmm. to help settle the war. And maybe he... Who does he team up with at that point? Does he yeah. team up with the with Iridan or does he team up with the people across the strait that is sort of like this um multi-god city where everybody's just like cooperative like you know the he says that in that city people humanity and gods had realized that if we all just work together we all get what we want you know yeah. it's sort of like a like a like a freestanding uh just a league of existence as opposed to like a singular government mm. structure like it is in Iridan yeah um so i think that it feels like patience would maybe team up with that side. It seems more his style than mm -hmm. to team up with the Raven. Yeah. With, with it painting the Raven as being like the antagonist, it's, it's hard for mm -hmm. the whole, all the rest of the time that we're getting anything from the Raven. I keep thinking of it as just like this God that's helping the people out and Definitely helps his people, but he helps his people because he knows that he will get more power from them if yeah. he helps them, you know, which is seems to be the nature of all the gods inherently. It's just some might be a little bit more compassionate than he seems to yeah. be. That, yeah, I guess that's really what I'm trying to see is if it's like, if it's the raven that is uh, 
like inherently evil or if it's uh, the uncle that's inherently evil. I forget everybody's name, but when they mm-hmm. come up, I, I know who it is. Hibal. I don't know Hibal. that any of them are necessarily evil or good. Yeah. I think that they just have different think, levels of care. Yeah, I don't think Habal is necessarily doing it to be evil. I think he's doing it because he thinks he's be- better. <laughs> you know, yeah. and he wants, and he, he's ambitious too. So, I mean, I can, I can kind of assume that the two of them together would be a dastardly right. duo. I have a theory that Hebal wants to overthrow the current structure and get away from the Raven somehow. And that's why he wants to move across the strait. And some of the stuff that was happening whenever they were asking the Raven those questions, whenever Iolo, Iolo gets to go up there and ask those questions, felt like it was patience influencing those answers. And they weren't coming from the Raven, they were coming from patience. Because like the first thing that happens is he asks, can you hear me? Which is what he's been saying several times whenever he's, you know, giving the narrative to Iolo, mm-hmm. um, who inherently can't hear him because he doesn't, he's not speaking, he's just doing his God thing. He doesn't have a mouth because he's just a bunch of stones. Yeah. And so I think that those answers were coming from patience, not the Raven. And the Raven is in some sort of limbo or weakened state or something like that. And Hibal's trying to take over and do something. Okay. Maybe. I don't know. I, I feel like that's part of the intrigue that's happening politically. There's some, you know, outside kingdom, like maybe it's the Zulans or something like that has cut some deal with the ball to overthrow the Raven and change things in that way. Hmm. I like that. It's a good theory. That's my current idea. I don't know. I don't know how the silent plays into it. Yeah. That's just a wild card kind of, even though it doesn't sound like it. Right. <laughs> the silent yeah. forest is the wild card. <laughs> right. But uh, I don't know. Yeah. There's, I don't know. Yeah. Cause the silent forest is sitting there juicing. I, we, I imagine because it's Seems just getting be, constant yeah. prayer and I don't know mm-hmm. if it's doing anything. There's definitely doesn't. people that are a little bit more because there's, there's the two gods of Iridan, right? There's mm-hmm. the raven and the sun. And there's definitely people who lean more one way or the other. Like Iolo seems to be more reverent towards the forest than people in Vastai, the city that they're in. Are. Yeah, because that's where the raven is. So, you know, you'd think that people would lean more towards the raven, but he's mm-hmm. from like a farmland yeah. that is south of the forest so he's, he's closer to the forest than he is to the raven mm-hmm. and so he, he, you know more than once he uh, makes these gestures that are apparently signs of reference towards the forest and stuff like yeah, that and, and he, he even like has more like he has the forest in mind like with his mm-hmm. ideas because i, I want to see he says it right doesn't him. he yeah yeah, he, yeah he says there's a, a point where it's like they're, yeah, they're going to the tower uh, to he's going to go ask those questions mm-hmm. and the the leader of the directions makes some mention about how like, you know, you are a commoner and you should be honored that we're going to go do this thing because people of your station don't get to do this, Mm -hmm. you know, and and, you know, you should understand the power and you know, that is here with the Raven blah, blah. And he says, yes. And the forest, you know, he he, he puts it in, you know, and they almost look at him like, yeah, the The leader of the directions (laughs) is kind of like, has like a kind of a reaction to it, but he ball being like, you know, our given mastermind villain mm. is sort of like, yes, it's good that you're that reverent, you know, mm-hmm. but it's kind of like a, like, see, that does that's it feel even, like a genuine comment. But even that is good manipulation. I, I didn't even right, think yeah. about it as manipulative mm-hmm. until you said it again. And I was like, yeah, no, that's good manipulation. He's good. Mm. Yeah. I hope, I hope he's not evil. That'd be a nice twist. <laughs> <laughs> if we right. can all work together. There's something else going on, obviously. Yeah. There's some, like all storytelling, there's a there's some misdirection happening in the current events that we're given. Like you said, maybe Hubal's not evil, yeah. or even, not even evil. Evil is the wrong just, word, but it's the easy word. <laughs> maybe he's not what we should be taking to be our antagonist. Right. Maybe he is more of a hero figure than we're given mm-hmm. at this point. Um, yeah, maybe the Raven's the antagonist. Just some new clue is going to come in that changes the way that we see it all. Mm-hmm. So that, you know, we're we're right at the point where we're. We're about to get to the coalescence of the two stories, yeah. the past and present, and then everything that happens after that, obviously. Uh, so everything is about to really start moving, I think. Yeah, it's juicy right now. We're in the meat of it, I feel mm. like. it's. Uh, we're, I feel like we're almost... We almost have enough like background to and like history of this world to get the the weight of decisions that will be made soon. You know, mm, right. <laughs> that way we can understand like, oh, that'll affect this and make this happen. And and, and yeah, 
and give power to whoever. And I feel like this book could have another book after it. I don't know it why. It certainly could. But it seems it seems like there's a lot of world building, and I honestly would like it to end and be all encompassing in this one in this one novel, just for the so just too. for our mm, benefit. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. kind of selfish. Yeah. But you know, I, I do see it having elements that could make it into a uh, you know a series or mm -hmm. a, you know a bigger story than everything than it could be. Certainly happens in a very small part of the world, mm -hmm. relatively speaking, because I think this is given to be Earth. Yeah. And this seems to be happening on one hemisphere. Yeah, and it's a, not even like a north south situation. It's like a north mid situation because the Zulans are coming from uh, what they'd say is very far south, Where, and they have an expansive kingdom. So like, yeah. there's like a huge southern region that the Zulans occupy. Iridan's sort of like equatorial in mm -hmm. a way, and then strength and patience comes from the north. And even then, he's not as far north as some other people. Yeah. There's people that like live like in what we would call the Arctic, it seems like. Like that one side story that we get. We should write a fanfic com combination of this book and Descendant of the Crane. <laughs> and, have, and have the two universes meet in our new world that we've made. Because right. they, have, they have the... Uh, oh, shoot. The, I can't even remember the name of the wizards in that. Um, oh, God. The sea, the soothsayers. Soothsayers, yeah. Mm -hmm. So they have the, the soothsayers soothes. and stuff and, and, and all this like unknown magic. And then we could even have them be like... The soothes all are small gods, <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> with not even that. That, that would directly, be like the reveal. It's could... just from the opposite side of the earth, mm -hmm. and so that's the way that they've interpreted it. Yeah, as opposed to like them being gods, mm -hmm. they're just you know this magical people or whatever. And it's the same. It, it is similar too because like words have like the same. Words always have heavy weight in all the fantasy books we've been reading. Right, <laughs> they have yeah. a lot more weight that's than very people will give them credit for. Uh, you know, mode of magic. Yeah, words, words of power. But uh, I keep thinking of like, because we left, you know, our our old our uh, heroine from uh, Descent of the Crane. I can't remember her name either. Um, hmm. We we left her with like the ambition to go to a new country to figure stuff out, right? Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. She's going feel... north to the enemy country, or what we're being, what we've been told is the enemy. You know, I feel like once. Once we're done with the our like conflict of the Hesina. God, Hesina, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Once we're done with the the conflict in this book, I feel like Hesina could just come up <laughs> and come through. All right, that would be interesting. <laughs> oh yeah, I obviously wouldn't work, but, yeah. <laughs> but it would be. I just I keep thinking of these two worlds together, and I don't I don't know why, but yeah. I want to want to make it work. <laughs> yeah. I guess just because they're both so unique in their own way. Like the Sooth magic was so unique, and then and then in this universe, it's just the whole. Um, history behind the gods and their power and and uh, and and this the every, all of that is super unique and just the even the I don't know do they have small gods in uh, mythology or is it just like less powerful? Uh, it, I mean it depends on the mythology Inter that you're yeah. talking about. Okay. Um, I think in, in in Greek mythology is pretty cut and dry. There's a hierarchy. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the gods come from Olympus. Like we know all of them. Mm -hmm. There's not like any sort of small thing. Mm -hmm. um the which obviously is the same for roman mythology because roman mythology is just you know renamed greek mythology uh in like shintoism and taoism and other eastern mm -hmm. uh religious structures there's different things yeah they're similar to this in a way yeah i guess that's that, what makes this one cool is it's not like a renamed greek mythology or whatever it's mm -hmm. not like you know or a different um Shaolin. Shaolin, you said? And, uh, Shaolin is what, not one of the ones I said, but that no, which, is... Uh, which ones did you say? Uh, sh there's Shinto, Shinto. and uh, Taoism, Taoism is another thing. Okay. That's, Taoism, uh, yeah, I know. I've heard of that the, one. It, but, it, but yet, it's more... It's more... At least Shinto is more like kind of like spirits okay. than anything. Yeah, yeah. There's like a... Ancestors. It's like a rich, diversified mythological structure mm -hmm. as opposed to like... There, there's the one god yeah. or whatever there's like different gods that are even just like on the same level and have like the same power or the same sort of like dominion even mm -hmm. and and so it's just they're more like they're just like spirits that have power as opposed to like the, the way that we were raised in the understanding of what a god is you know mm -hmm. it's just a it, the nature of it is different yeah um and more in line with what is happening here i think uh 
So I guess that answers the question. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, it's it, this is a cool world. It's got a lot of just it's, it's unique. It's not it's not copying any other mythology that I know. You know, and it's mm-hmm. I mean I'm sure sure it pulls from some things, but every story pulls from what we know. And this right. is a story of a bunch of stories. It mm-hmm. feels like pulled together, and. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I enjoy it. I think we've got a lot of like room to grow in the story too. But yeah. you know, there's only uh, well, it sounds silly when you say it like this. There's only 38 more chapters left. <laughs> but, <laughs> right, they're just um, so small. But yeah, there really are only. There's only like the other half of the book, and we yeah. knocked this out in you know six hours or so, and mm-hmm, and then mm-hmm. you only got another exact same amount of time. Right. That, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I think we have enough backstory to really feel the weight and i feel like a lot can happen mm-hmm. without necessarily needing to tell more history in in the past right which is i feel like could very easily tip this into maybe the boring category for novel if it just keeps continuing being all story and not necessarily plot development mm-hmm. but i don't think it'll do that i, I, I have, yeah. i've got a very good feeling that it's not gonna that it's this not gonna the, i think i think that you're right i think once like we meet up with like the current era like the mm-hmm. when we get to present i think it'll be uh with iphones and stuff <laughs> yeah, right <laughs> no once we get to present with uh, alo and, and, and when, once it's all present yeah 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 so. uh, i think i think really we'll like they won't really need to tell much more backstory we'll have everything we need we'll have a little bit more about mm-hmm. you know our characters i think and, all and that's their, really their left to come from the past is like we already mentioned how does patience get to iridan <laughs> Yeah, and maybe a little How bit. How does he get involved in what's happening and yeah. then physically move there, you know? Yeah, unless, like, unless Aeolo's past actually really does matter, because we give a, get a little bit, but not, like, a ton. He's a farmer. He's yeah. just the son of a relatively um, successful farmer. Yeah, and that, yeah, and then... And he just becomes a soldier for whatever reason. Yeah, so, like, unless that matters. <laughs> yeah, I don't see how but, uh, it does, except I, for I to further inform his character, you know? And and unless maybe the god of strength and patience, like, maybe maybe he influenced him to come, you know? Well, maybe but, maybe subtly, without, you yeah, know? Yeah, because without, he didn't know who he was whenever he first came. But he had a him. good feeling, because maybe he brought him here without well, meaning to. That's, that's he, all I'm saying. He was, well, yeah, I, I think that... It'd be interesting but he to see says it. that he's got a not a, like literally speaking a good feeling, but he <laughs> knows to be interested in him because he's with Mawat, and he knows Mawat because right. he's been with Mawat since he was born, and knowing everything that was happening because he knows Even, what he knows what happened to Mawat's father. Mm-hmm. Uh, he just hasn't been told to us yet because of narrative structure, but. So he was looking for Mawat's return because he knew what was happening mm-hmm. and what was going to happen. Or, you know, and so, and so it was like, well, fuck, what's going to happen? You know, what's Mawat going to do? And so he was looking for Mawat's return, knowing that he had been sent for. And then he comes out of the forest uh, and hears this stranger that he's never seen before with Mawat. And knowing Mawat and his nature, he's like, so who is this person that is important enough to mm-hmm. Mawat that he's being brought along for this journey? Yeah. From which he's not supposed to return. He's supposed to become the lease and live out the rest of his days here. So who is this person that is important enough that Moat brings him with him? Mm-hmm. And so that's what starts the intrigue, or the interest at least that the uh, patience has with the Olo. Yeah, is who is this new character that the person I'm looking for trusts enough to bring with? Yeah, I know this is kind of a cop out, but I still think that like because some of the choices or some of the things done by the gods, like they don't necessarily mean for them to happen or they mm-hmm. do them without intention, but that it does happen. Um, I, I still feel like, you know, the God of strength and patience could passively have made some, something happen, you know, like where, where the, you know, I kill a butterfly and then a tsunami happens in right, yeah. Russia or whatever. I, 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 that's what I was talking about earlier. Like I want to see all the little cookie crumbs to the little pieces of the story. And I want, Really, I want our God to know more. <laughs> so I want him to know when he was influencing him, and I want him to tell us. Because mm-hmm. I'd like to I'd like to learn that, uh, you know, Aeolo was subtly influenced by whatever, you know, by maybe maybe by mosquitoes, you know, <laughs> by, you know, by literally by his friend. That, right. you know, so I don't think that that'll happen, but it would be fun for me. I, yeah. I, I would enjoy that there, there to we have be some sort of taste of that. For that to happen. And that would be the only reason I could even see Aeolo mattering and that that coming up. Like if we're looking for more past, like that would be the... 
and then even then it would it's still kind of hard like why grab him because then you'd have to give a little bit more backstory of <laughs> why that was the chosen well, guy. i think that it gives but, us uh, a window that moat couldn't give us given his station and so that's why he's mm, the character we're following okay because he's a nobody yeah i like that he's a nobody <laughs> he's like he's, he's that uh he's that guy. it was it was funny when he like kind of countered Mawat like when they're having like a private conversation. Mm-hmm. I like that they're like he looks to him as a peer, not not as an equal, right? But mm-hmm. an intellectual equal for sure, but not mm-hmm. a an equal by by right. status. So an intellectual equal. So he's, he'll look to him as a peer. Yeah, he understands to, to, that at the very least, the Olo brings something better out of Mawat. Right, is able to sort of temper him a mm-hmm. little ways, and you know. It, he understands the beneficial nature of having Yolo with him and yeah. being able to interact with him at, in that way as opposed to him being just a subject mm-hmm. like many other people that he's dealt with. Certainly with him like, you know, leading the army down on the south, you know, where they're all just like soldiers under his command or whatever. Mm-hmm. And even that's really loose. They go to some pains to talk about how there's not actually a military structure. <laughs> Uh, he's just given to be the leader because he's the Ravens Lisa's heir. Mm-hmm. And so there's an inherent power in yeah. that position. So you think there's an inherent protection in that position as well? Or they pro- say so. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's what I was thinking too. I just didn't remember. Or at least right. they, they sort of make the assumption. It's not outright said mm-hmm. that Mawat can't die because he's being protected. It's just, everybody makes that assumption. It's like, well, you're the next yeah. lease. So and of the course the Raven's die, not so. going to make you right. get hurt or anything like that. You know, you'll be protected. Duh. What a twist. So, That'll happen. Right. <laughs> I think the thing, For, like the reveal could be that like someone kills Mawat. And then Aolo has to take And over. everybody recognizes that the Raven's dead or something like oh, that. Yeah, you know, then we don't want, because his power is not there anymore. Yeah. Or, or they're able to kill Hibal, the current lease, mm-hmm. or something like that. You know, like maybe that could be the method of reveal. But I don't know. Yeah, there's a lot of unknowns, and we're right in the middle of it. Yeah, <laughs> just like yeah. every time. As, yeah, I know. <laughs> but, we, we always find a way to be exactly in the middle of the mystery without any answers just yet. Yeah, that's good though. I, I, I we got a good bite of it, and I'm. I, it made me want more. Like I sometimes I'll listen and I'll just like try to get. Not not through it or to the ending point, but you know what I mean. You're just like, like mindful just, of the time that you're spending with yeah, it. Yeah, you know? I'm more mindful of the time. Like this this one, as I finished it up today, I was like, oh, that's good. I kind of I could definitely keep listening. Like mm-hmm. I I, I sort of wasn't in the mood to listen to the rest of it today, mm-hmm. and then and then I was listening to it and, and it got better and better and and I was like, okay, no, I'm into this. And then by the end of, of today, when I had to stop, I was like, okay, I need something really funny so that I don't think about it. <laughs> right? <laughs> <book."> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, definitely. It, it starts out slower, and I think that's because we're we start off like you know in eight different places, mm-hmm. and none of them seem to really matter to each other. Uh, yeah, it's, it's hard to make of like, sense of it. How all. does any of this make any sense? I really, yeah, yeah. And then certainly with you know strength and patience being there since the beginning of time, effectively. <laughs> yeah, like a lot. The several of his initial chapters are just like going through the evolution of the planet mm-hmm. and kind of just like, why does this matter? Mm-hmm. I don't really he even made a joke it. about like the earth being round and it knowing it. And it's like, if, but if I say it and it wasn't round, I could make it round. And how uh, much power would how that, much power would that me? sap yeah. from me? And yeah. you know, it was another example of that. Mm-hmm. So when, um, so, uh, he tells a story about the goose God and the story really quick is this goose God. He sees, uh, this pe- these people make like a sacrifice to the goose god, and he makes a spear tip for the uh, the main person. And that I forgot actually how it started with the goose god, but I think it was just some the subject that he took a, a liking to. Yeah, the, and he so he gives a him particular like a spear in. tip, and this spear tip will kill um, one thing a day that like he throws like it throws true like mm-hmm. at least once a like day. Like it's always a kill shot. It's always a, mm-hmm. at least one kill shot a day. Yeah. So and if it's the only shot, then you're getting one. Right. And um yeah, so the story so when that guy died, he thought that it was all good, you know, cuz he was buried with his uh his spear that the, the mm-hmm. goose god thought it was all good. So he was buried with that tip and um yeah, but by coincidence, somebody with the same name generations and generations later picked up the spear tip and through not a loophole, but kind of a loophole, who knows if it was the passive influence of the goose god himself. Uh, cause that seems to be a thing that happens a lot just in my, mm-hmm. in my head, at least <laughs> there mm-hmm. seem to be passive things that are happening that the gods don't know that they're doing that they do. 
But there was another person with the same name that came along later and the same rules applied where, you know, when he was actually, he took the spear tip because he was in a time of need and really needed a spear tip. And then he gifted it to his son who had the same name. And the son is the one that had the spear tip and the rules applied the, you know, one throw a day. And it was true. It, at least <laughs> the first throw mm -hmm. of the day was true. And uh, he just thought it was a good spear tip. And so the goose God comes back to ask him for the spear tip and, uh, he can't deny a God. He's a little disappointed giving away his like best weapon, but he's like, whatever. So he like tosses it to him without mm -hmm. thinking it like kind of lazily tosses it to him. And then it kills him because it throws true. And right. he was throwing it at that guy. So like the, mm -hmm. so the goose God cooked it, cooked killed himself. himself. Yeah. <laughs> cooked his own. Yeah. That's like the whole point of that mm -hmm. story is that the decisions that the gods make, whatever it is that they decide to do and enact, mm -hmm have potentially far reaching consequences that you would never would have seen or intended. Yeah. And this one, you know, is just a loop back of how a God killed himself by yeah, the making coincidence a semi careless. Of the same yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. it, and and I, I liked the fact that it wasn't even, or at least if I'm remembering it right, that it was the, that it wasn't even the, the person that found the spear tip. It was the, the dad found the tip and then gives it to the son who has the same name. So it was right. like, yeah extra coincidental i feel like which mm -hmm. is which is just fun and, and and then makes me go back to thinking are there even coincidences in this like are gods pulling and pushing all the tides of the earth but then it's like is there free will and <laughs> too many questions right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm making my own mysteries but uh i don't remember why i brought that story up but i just thought it was an interesting little anecdote mm -hmm. and uh and it kind of gives you an insight into like the power of words you know because the he said the spear tip by this guy will be you know, will throw true. And he didn't think that the name would matter. And then coincidentally, years later, somebody with the same name gets it. Right, <laughs> so yeah. it did mm -hmm. matter. And the, and the rules did apply still. And so he killed himself because whatever. He th yeah. So it's just, I, I don't know. I liked that story. Uh, probably the best out of all the stories he's yeah. told so far. Yeah, I don't know. It was just, it was silly. And it didn't straight up say like <laughs> that he threw, that he tossed the spear to the goose god and then it pierced him through the face or something. You know, I didn't say right. that he just killed the shit out of him. It, it, it just hinted at it as hard as possible. Yeah. Given, know? yeah, it makes, it, you know, it, God, what's the phrase I'm looking for? It makes good on the things that it's given us to know that the, you know, the nature of the spear in the hands of the person with the name has this ability. Mm-hmm. And that is undeniable yeah. because the God made it so. Mm -hmm. And so then whenever he, you know, just kind of like callously just like tosses it in mm -hmm. the direction of the goose, like, yeah, go ahead and take yeah, it. it. Like, this sucks, but go ahead and take it. Mm -hmm. It We know what happens then. Yeah. Very similar to like the, the logic path of what happens is undeniable. Yeah. That's, that's very, very similar to the spear situation in, um, uh, with, uh, Odysseus where his son kills him. Hmm. Yeah. Because it's like a spear that isn't the same rules. No, no, it's the spear tip. It kills if you if you just barely cut and yeah. he like took it from him and cut himself. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's kind of a similar vein, but not saying that they took this story from that because they didn't. It didn't even occur to me until just now that they right, were, that yeah. they that it was a spear that was a similar weapon. But uh, I don't know, it's just kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, thinking about all of it. Yeah, that's the first little parallel that I've drawn that's not really... I mean, it, I don't think that the author took from that to influence this story, but... Uh, well, those sort of like, it was you know, looping stories of self-demise exactly. are a very common thing for any human to come up with. Yeah, yeah. no, that's a good point. And, and I guess just it being a spear made and a, a loop of demise yeah. <laughs> made me think of, uh, of that. So that's, the par that's a very similar story, but... I oh, mean, I'm excited. I, I, I'm eager to get the rest of it done. I'm glad we're doing yeah. it in two chunks. <laughs> yeah. I, wouldn't, I don't think I would have liked stopping after a third, um, a third of it. <laughs> yeah, it uh, would have provided much less on, in this story to have stopped 15% earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even just barely 15%. Yeah, well, a little more than that. What would, what would the math on that be? 17%, 27%? Whatever. <laughs> to have stopped a third of the way through instead of half of the way through would have been, in this case, substantially less rewarding. Mm -hmm. um, but then maybe the middle third would have been extremely exciting. That's true. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> we would have had less to talk about. That's no, for sure. And it, and it works out perfectly for our one-year anniversary. So. Yeah. 
it'll didn't even plan that. allow us to start a new book with the anniversary of the show, which is going to, I think, be beneficial. Yeah, I think that or at the very good. least, it just lines up nicely. Yeah, it just it's, and congruent it's nice things are nice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it feels good. Like, yeah, we yeah we totally planned that. Right. Yeah, it makes us feel like we're fucking smart as shit. <laughs> Yeah, like we're a well-oiled operation here. Yeah, right. Like we're actually thinking about what we do. Yeah. I mean, we're planning ahead a little bit, reading. Yeah, <laughs> right. If you had told 10th uh, grade Will that you'd be doing a, um, I don't want to call it a radio show, but like a uh, talking format show about books that you read, would you believe it? I, um, I wouldn't have even known what that meant. Yeah, right. Like, I didn't even start doing podcasts until three years ago. That's when I got into them. Yeah, the first time that I ever listened to a podcast must have been 2010. That's what I was going to say. That's when I remember hearing the word the first time, and it was Rooster Teeth. <laughs> I think that I remember you telling me that. Maybe. I don't think Rooster Teeth didn't have a podcast then, really? I don't think. I, don't I know, know they did by 14, 2014. That's four years, so. And they, I think they started like in 2011, 2012 or something. Oh, okay. The first podcast I ever listened to were IGN podcasts. Mm, nice. Um, but, mm, yeah. This is a, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have known what that meant. Right. If you had told me in you know, yeah. high school, 10th grade, like you say. Would you have thought you'd be in a book club? Uh, I, I could have believed that. I can believe that too when I say that. I was still reading a ton back then. Mm-hmm. So yeah. When I say I've those been like, words. Well, duh. I'm, I'm, of course I'm never going to stop reading. I read all the fucking time. Yeah. Yeah, it, I like, I, it's silly having a, like, that I like the, the little bit of structure so much, but I like pushing myself to read on a schedule because mm-hmm. then it makes me, I don't know, devour content rather than just right. kind of going at my own pace, picking mm-hmm. whatever I want, maybe quitting halfway through some, like, because I, I was telling you this before the show or maybe during the show too, but um, the first like 15, 20% of this book, I wasn't, or that we read at least, I wasn't like crazy about. It was, it was good, but um. I think it was just the confusion of the of the characters and and it not lining up exactly with my imagination that kind of threw me off. And mm-hmm. then and then once I started writing some some notes down so that I could definitely have it make sense when I looked over my notes and stuff, um, that's when it really started to get better. And then I stopped. I honestly too, I was thinking, why did the voices matter? That those don't matter. Right. <laughs> like just mm-hmm. just it's the story. Just listen to the story. Stop letting it bother you. And then once I did that, I, I, I started to really, really enjoy it. So I'm, mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to the rest of the book. Yeah, I am too. And I, I just want more answers at this point. <laughs> There's so many different things and I've, you know, only got like sort of half formed ideas about what any of it may be because there's so little to go off of right now. Mm-hmm. Or there's not even that there's so little, but there's kind of the opposite that there's so much to go off of. There's like, you know, like four different things happening. And, and, and even those four different things are just the heads of eight different paths that came together to make four different paths now. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's there's so many things going on that I'm not sure what any of it means necessarily yet. And it's it's mildly frustrating, but I guess that's the nature of, you know, (laughs) seeking out answers. Um, So frustrating might not be the right word. I just, I'm just ready for whatever the answer is, you know, or I'm ready to have an idea. Because the only idea that I have is that, the, the raven's dead in Hibal, or or at least the raven is in a very weakened state, and Hibal is taking advantage of that to move away from that structure of government and become, you know, a, a singularity of power rather than a, you know, a, a power that just answers to the raven effectively. Mm-hmm. And but even that's just kind of like a half-assed idea that I have. I don't have any real details about how that would have happened and why that would be happening. Yeah, and it just you know that, that doesn't answer anything about the silent. It doesn't give me any answers as to why the patience is there, right? And, and so this just yeah <laughs> for the story. Mm-hmm. And I mean, we got to hear about the big the big battle, the big fight that happened, <laughs> the good fight. Right. Yeah. Because at this point, the raven, or what the raven represents, if the raven is dead, mm-hmm. uh, owns the entire strait at this point. Mm-hmm. That's the only reason that Haval would be considering moving the bench across the strait to the other city is because that city is also under his influence mm-hmm. or under the raven's influence so the you know that that consolidation of power or that growth of the realm happened mm-hmm. where in the current the current past storyline the war is still on so the, 
you know, that, that definitely does happen at some point. What happened to all those little gods that were across the way? Um, yeah, there's just you know, my one half-assed theory doesn't provide nearly enough answers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's a good guess, though. It's a good theory, and we'll get the answers if that's it. Yeah, well, I mean, we'll definitely we'll find out. Yeah. That's the nature of how books go. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully the, the acceleration and resolution is paced well. Yeah. Um, or at least in a way that pays off the current pace of everything. And I, and I would like there to be resolution at the end of the book, I think, for all of it, rather yeah, than Yeah, I don't want it to story. be a multi-series thing. I, I would, if for this to be going in the direction that it is right now and at the pace that it's currently going at right now, this is so far a very well-paced singular story. I think so. And um, that's something that I just really appreciate. Yeah. So we'll find out, obviously. Yeah. I'm looking case. forward to it. I think, yeah, yeah it's got to be hard to write a single. Yeah, so. probably. Anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, you guys know what to do. Just read the second half of the book. Mm -hmm. um, just, finishing it. Yeah, finish it out. I don't think there's an epilogue. I, I don't think, think so. Ends. If there is one, read it. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and you know how to find us at uh, all the social media platforms, Instagram and Twitter. And mm -hmm. yeah, no Facebook, um, at uh, ears underscore stamps, and then dog ears and time stamps at gmail dot com. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, let us know what you think. Leave us any um, comments. Yeah, uh, like and not subscribe. I guess subscribe. <laughs> yeah, like and subscribe. Um, right. But yeah, five star review would be great. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, just keep it. Uh, keep up the reading. I'm having fun. I like this book. Yeah, I'm excited for whatever the conclusion is going to be. Yeah. Hopefully, it lives up to my anticipation. It will. <laughs> I decided. Okay. And because words hold binding power. Hmm. That's good. Well, I'm glad you've done that. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it didn't take too much of your power to make it so. I, it'll happen when you're reading. <laughs> it'll start sucking from me. <laughs> right. All right. Well, I'm Will Edric. I'm Jordan Schaffer. This is Doggers and Timestamps.